welcome to Attic Raiders Retro Reviews, where today we're going to do something a little bit different from the norm. We're not going to be doing a full vintage board game review today, instead we're going to be looking at how to fix up a vintage board game. If, like me, you buy and collect board games, you're going to find that you quite often come across ones that don't work. Now, with vintage games, obviously, there's a lot of reasons why it might not be working. But I find normally it's because it's an electronic or a motorised game. And that element which uses electricity is not working. So, if we can fix that and get it working, you're golden. And you would be surprised, it only takes a tiny amount of electrical, mechanical know-how in order to be able to fix these things. Now, if you've got a motorised game that's not working, there's some very simple reasons why that motor might not be turning. The first thing is that obviously the battery might be dead. The battery might be inserted incorrectly. And one of the usual standard ones is that there is battery leakage in the battery compartment and there is major corrosion, which is stopping electricity from flowing from a battery into the circuit. If it's not battery corrosion, which it usually is, then there might be a problem with the wiring inside. Usually a wire has come loose and needs to be resoldered. A lot of these vintage games have very small nylon gears which can crack or split over time. So sometimes those gears or cogs need to be replaced. And if it's not the gears, then the other thing that quite often goes wrong with motorised game is that the motor itself stops working. Now, if a motor stops working, Yes, you might think, oh no, how on earth am I going to fix a motor? But I found in my experience that there's one very, very simple reason why the motor itself stops working. And that is because basically it gets gummed up. The lubricant that's been put in it 25, 30 years ago, if we're talking about vintage games, has coagulated a little bit, gummed things up and it just won't spin. But with a bit of a jump start, you can fix that. So today we're going to have a look at a game that I got from eBay, Chili Silly Penguins. And this was one that I bought, which was advertised as non-working. So we're going to see if we can fix this. It's one where the motor doesn't run. So I'm going to take you through those reasons why it might not be working and figure out which one it is and see if we can get it to work. Let's take a look. So I've got a motorised board game here that's not working. With this one, what's meant to happen is that you switch it on here at the side and when you do that, the battery turns the motor and that then turns this spindle, which moves a polar bear around. But the important thing is that this bit should turn and it's not. So to figure out why, we need to turn it over and take it apart. First of all, we're just going to take the battery compartment off and we can see here that when you switch on the switch that connects this piece of metal to the end of the battery which should connect up the circuit. First thing to do is to check out that the battery is the right way around. Well it is so that's not the problem and then if I'm using a battery that's not come straight from the packet I like to check to make sure that it is actually working how it should. And one of the good things with working in a school is that you can borrow the scientific equipment. You can see here that's the wrong way around but we can see just by connecting this up here that that battery has got 1.5 volts just like it's meant to so there's nothing wrong with that battery. So the next thing to check is the electrical connections inside this battery compartment. In order to do that, we're going to unscrew these two screws here so we can lift this whole thing out. With that disconnected there, the battery compartment comes out nice and easy. We can flip this over and that will help us undo this. And then we can get the whole thing apart. With the two halves of the motor housing separated, you can see inside. You can see here the gearing in this is very, very 
simple in here but a lot of games have much much smaller little white nylon cogs so you have to be very very careful because if they actually spill out all over the place it can be very difficult to work out where they're supposed to go to get them back into working order so be very careful taking these things apart now what i'm interested in for this bit though is the actual motor itself here and i want to see what happens with my battery if I place the battery in and connect it up if it's actually getting power to the motor or whether there's no electrical connection happening through here because of maybe a chemical reaction and some dulling on here or here so I'm going to test these points here to see if they are conducting electricity. So I'm going to take my voltmeter here and connect it up to these two pin points on the motor here and that way I can tell that when I connect this up the needle on my voltmeter is moving and going to 1.5 volts which means that the motor itself is getting the necessary electricity that it needs to move it's not that there is a corrosion problem on the metal here that's stopping the electricity from getting through this circuit from the battery itself. So that proves that that's working, but it's the actual motor itself here that is the problem. Now with most game motors, they will be actually properly wired up, but this one, the way it's been constructed, can just simply pull out of here because it's just pressure from these mechanical metal connections here that is pressing it into place so that motor just pulls out completely with no wires so i can test this really easily so now i'm just going to use the crocodile clips to connect straight onto the pins of this motor and then connect that onto the ends of my battery and see if it will turn at the moment it won't at all but if I hold it in place I normally find that these motors seize up and that if you give them a bit of a jump start look at that now it is working normally you find that it's norm just the grease inside here kind of seizes up and that's why they don't work if you connect them up to a battery and literally like i just did then spin it a couple of times to loosen up that grease while it is connected to a battery it will start working and now with that motor working i can connect that all back up again so now with everything put back in place the motor housing clipped back together and screwed in place we can put the battery into the battery holder, we can put the battery compartment lid on and if we switch it on here, the motor spins. It's not the quietest thing in the world but that's kind of what you come to expect with motorised board games anyway. And with that done it's just a matter of attaching that motor housing back to the bottom of the game board and putting the screws back in place and then that once it's screwed in is going to be back to how it should be and let's see Take it like this, flip it on, and now it rotates and works exactly as it should. So there it is. With just a little bit of know-how and the correct tools, you can fix most battery-operated vintage board games. Because most vintage board games have very, very simple circuits and don't have an awful lot of electronics in them. 
Obviously, if you've got a game like Mall Madness or Dream Phone, where there's a lot more electronics involved, it's gonna be a lot harder, and those we might not be able to fix. But with a simple, really basic circuit in a motorized game, it's pretty easy, and you can find that you can save yourself a lot of money. This game, for instance, has been advertised for about £30 before on eBay, but this one I got for just £5 because it was not working. But now it is working, and I've saved myself £25. Well, I hope this has been useful. Until next time, this is Attic Raiders Retro Reviews.